Hello and welcome to another episode of Stolaroid Stories. This is my podcast, but I'm also recording this on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, hello, this is my face. Um, normally on Stolaroid Stories, I interview people, interesting people. Some of them are experts in their field. Um, in today's episode, I'm going to say, I'm going to do something that I've never done before, and I'm going to share a very personal story. Um, I wasn't sure whether to do it or not, but I've shared so many personal stories in the past, and I thought, well, why not share this one? Um... You, you might know that I also read read I read out my blog posts. I like writing. I like blogging. Um, writing is something that helps me think. Something that helps me, you know, discover new thoughts in my mind. And um, I share those th those ideas and those thoughts because I just want to connect. Maybe a thought might help you think about something or about a problem that you have because you know we are all very similar you can see my cat if you're looking if you're watching this video uh, on YouTube that's Sammy yeah he's there um, so I read out my blog posts and this is basically this is another blog post that I'm going to to read out today um, let me open it the title is, if I can open it, Falling in Love with Multiple Sclerosis. A personal reflection on loving my partner and her disease. So, um, are you ready? Let's go. Aloha and I... No, wrong. Aloha had already been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when I told her I wanted to be her boyfriend. It was 2013. I was 26 and she was 29. She looked healthy, so that, I guess, made it easier for me to say I wanted to be with her. I knew multiple sclerosis was as bad as it sounds. I knew multiple sclerosis was as bad as it sounds, though. It's a disease that doesn't cause one problem, it causes multiple. Fatigue, numbness, difficulty walking, muscle weaknesses, tremors, blurred vision, pain, speech impairment. It could affect anything that's controlled by, your ner by the nervous system. There's no cure for it, and it can get worse over time. It's a nasty disease. So, are you sure you want to be with me? Aloha asked me. I'm sick. You know that, don't you? I was 100% sure. Aloha got my heart with her drawings, open-mindedness and sense of humor. The ugliness of her disease couldn't stand a chance against the beauty of her soul. I adored her boobs, too. I didn't care about what her immune system was up to and was not afraid that one day I might be pushing her into a wheelchair. In fact, I thought one day I could end up in a wheelchair. There are a million ways for that to happen. So to me, it seemed unreasonable, unreasonable not to start a relationship for fear of what might happen tomorrow. Tomorrow might never come. Tomorrow a doctor might look at me and say, the results of your brain scans are not looking good. Multiple sclerosis, that's what you now have now, bro. Saying yes to Aloha's disease was easy for me. Living with it, I then realized, is not. Since 2013, I've taken Aloha to hospitals multiple times. Medical checks, visits, emergencies, headaches, inex inexplicable pains. She's only 39, but has seen more doctors than my 91-year-old granny has ever in her life. Sorry, she is only 39, but has seen more doctors than my 91-year-old granny has in her life. That's wrong again. She's only 39, but has seen more doctors 
than my 91-year-old granny has in her entire life. There are times when she gets tired for no reason and needs to spend the whole day lying on the couch. If I'm lucky, this happens during the week with no serious consequences. If I'm unlucky, this happens at the weekends and our plans get ruined. If I'm extremely unlucky, this happens on house cleaning day. No one in history has ever wanted to clean a two-bedroom apartment by himself while his partner is watching Stranger Things on the couch. This is how MS, multiple sclerosis, can get. All in all, though, Aloha health, Aloha's health conditions are good. Her drawers are filled with scans, prescriptions and reports written in a language only people with six master's degree in neurology can understand. Yet you wouldn't know, yet you wouldn't know she is ill if I, if I didn't tell you. I mean, look at her. And uh, if you go to my blog post, you will see a photo. She looks healthy, yes, but when multiple sclerosis hits and sucks all her energy, a part of me goes, Oh, come on, are you seriously so fatigued you can't do anything today? I must confess, sometimes I forget my partner is sick, because thank thankfully, MS has never showed me how hard it can strike. Except one time it did. One day, Aloha's legs started trembling so badly that she looked like she was dancing to some African music. I thought she was going to lose control of her limbs and never and never be able to walk again. If I'll ever end up in a wheelchair, I'll break up with you. I don't want to ruin your life, she said that day. I made, I made her promise not to say such a stupid thing ever again. And then forced her to clean the apartment. Things have been going relatively well for the past decade. That's why when I look into the future, I think the toughest time, the toughest times are yet to come. I hope scientists will find a cure. I hope I'll be healthy and wealthy enough to take care of my partner. In the meantime, I'll keep crossing my fingers every time she's being visited by a neurologist. I'll, <clears throat> I'll keep holding my breath every time she looks at the results of her most recent brain scans. I'll keep wondering what's it like to have an autoimmune disease, hoping my body will never find that out. As I'm waiting for a better or worse future, I can't do anything but keep falling in love with Aloha and multiple sclerosis too. Thank you for listening to this. Thank you for reading this on my blog. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Um, at the end of this story, I say, before I hit publish, Aloha reads each of the stories that I write, including the most boring ones. She's the person who reads me the most. In fairness, I say, she has to do that, she has to do that, as I give her no other option. The first words that came out of her mouth while reading this story were, Hey, you can't talk about my boobs. Anyway. Um, okay, so I did it, I did it. I, I just wanted to share this. Why am I sharing this? I thought, why should one know about Aloha's disease and my life? Well, it all goes back to a book that I read. Again, it's always the same book. If you, if you know me, if you've been watching this space for a while, you know that in 2021, I read a book called Story Worthy, which is here, this book that uh, basically tells you to find stories in your life and to share those stories because that's how you connect with other people. So I'm, I'm hoping to connect with you if you have, I don't know, um, a relative, a friend or someone in your life who has a disease and, uh, you know, that affects you as well. So that's all, that's all, that's the reason why I decided to share this story. And um, I hope, I hope we can connect through this. You don't have to, you know, it's not that now we're going, we're going out for a drink because we have the same, the same story. But maybe something in your mind, you know, something in your mind 
was activated by this story. I feel that if you do the same, uh, you know, you can connect with other people too. That's uh, it's as simple as that. All right. Uh, thank you for listening to this episode. I'm planning to record more of my stories and reading out more of my blogs. Of course, I'm going to interview more people because uh, that's my favorite thing to do, along with writing. Um, so you can find the link to this blog post, to this story, in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast or on on the what's that on YouTube? What's it called? I'm new to you to you to new. I'm new to YouTube, so um, in the description of the video. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Get back to me with your thoughts, comments, whatever. Bye-bye.